Shit, I'd play the D20 version if it make you happy. Dude. Man, I gotta put this down. I gotta put it down. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Okay. Uh, Stat it. Uh, Cthulhu. Babylon 5. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be like two hours long, this fucking episode, but I'm fucking loving it. I'm gonna split this up into so Like, every time I return to a tangent, I'll... Yes. Yeah, okay. So, hey, Oreo. How you doing? I'm talking about great old ones and insanity. Yeah? You, oh, you want to go? Okay. I'm talking about nerd stuff. I know. I'm talking about... Okay. Oh, oh I'm talking about scary stuff. Oh. Don't talk about scary stuff, Daddy. I'm not going to. I'm going to talk about Babylon 5. Okay. What I was initially talking about, like an hour ago, was... Uh, uh, how you handle the guy who knows everything about series continuity and tries to pull bullshit on you. It's not as big as a problem as it used to be. I remember having a shitload of trouble with this. Um, what game was I playing? Oh, this was uh, World of Darkness. I was playing a vampire game. And there's always this guy who... Ha See, I just went on another tangent. There's always this guy who has all the books. Like, he has all the clan books. And he has all of the side books, and so he knows everything about every clan. He knows who runs every clan. He knows where all the antediluvians are. He knows what all the politics are. He knows who runs Chicago. He knows who runs the guys who run Chicago. You know, he knows every city's hierarchy, and if he doesn't know, he can look it up. In like 10 seconds, he can look it up. So he knows everything. So like, if your party starts off in Chicago and you go, this is Prince Wilfred von Hammersmark, and the guy goes, that's not who the prince is. What the fuck? You know, so there's it, this fucking guy. And so I was like, yeah, I'd run into this and I caved. I was like, oh, okay, that that's who it is. Never cave, by the way. Never do that. Because as soon as you do that, you give him an inch, you give him a mile. So um, in Babylon 5, I saw this coming. So I was like, you know, if I start them off in Babylon 5, what the fuck am I going to do? When am I going to set it? And... How am I going to deal with the fact that if they've seen Babylon 5, they've seen all of it, they know what's going to happen. And they know, like, if Mr. Morden showed up, they know he's bad news. Right? That you're going to try to shoot the guy in the face for no reason. The guy's, the guy's going to be like, how are you doing? He's like, I'm Mr. Morden. I just have one question for you. What do you want? And the guy's like, I want to shoot you in the face with a PPG, motherfucker! Boom! You know? So... I'd be like, why did you do that? He'd go, it's Mr. Morton. He's clearly some greasy, evil motherfucker. Did you see his hair? <laughs> and I'm like, what? No, fuck you. And like, you know, campaign ruin. I, you know, so I'm like, what do I do? Because <sighs> there's no way, like you'd think there's, what would you do? You know, you want to run a Babylon 5. You desperately want to run a Babylon 5 game. There's a few ways to do it. One is you don't set it on Babylon 5. You know, you set it, sometime in the future you set it sometime in the past that's actually a really good idea by the way is to set it on the previous babylon stations i'm not sure how long those lasted but the, like every babylon station before five was destroyed except for one but whatever um so yeah you could set it on a previous babylon station but again it's not babylon five you could set it like there was a brief spinoff called uh excalibur i think it was crusade crusade and that was like more of a Star trek -y type one where they had a ship and they, instead of a space station, they sailed around and, and did shit. They went places. You could do that. Although Crusade sucked. Um, well, the, part of the reason Crusade sucked was because they aired the fucking episodes out of order. Anyway, another tangent. So you're like, okay, what, what do I do for Babylon 5? Because my options are so limited here. And so what I did was, and I, if I may toot my own horn, this was fucking brilliant on my part. I was like, okay, here's what I do. And I explained this to them. I'm like, parallel dimension. It's Babylon 5, but it's not. Here's what it is. You guys determine on your own together what role you want to be on Babylon 5. If you want to be the captain, okay. If you want to be the, the Psychor operative, if you want to be a Psychop, if you want to be the chief of security, whatever you want, go ahead. You can, if you want to be the fucking fighter pilot, hey, I can do that for you. So, and honestly, we never had that many arguments. Well, it was only one time. But it, you'd think everyone would argue, like, I want to be the captain. Honestly, not. 
You know, if two people wanted to be the captain, they would just kind of like rock, paper, scissors over it and like, I'm the captain, I'm the XO. We, I, I, I'm actually stunned I didn't have a problem with that. We had one guy, actually the, the thing people fought over was the Psychor operative. Because they're like, I want to be the psychic dude. I want to have the powers, right? Um, we, I think one guy wanted to be the Minbari diplomat. Or they want, oh, rangers. Everyone fought over the ranger. Like, I want the fucking staff that fucking extends out. Like, I want to I want to be fucking Marcus. And, you know, I want to be fucking Marcus. I'm like, you can both be Marcus, you know. Um, but, yeah, actually, that was the role people fought over was the ranger or the psychor guy. They always want to be a psychop. In fact, that, that that was the thing is they always because there's ratings. There's I think it's like P zero to P ten or actually they go higher than P ten, but psychops have to be P ten. Ten is really really good. And so when you're rolling a character, you're like, if you're gonna be a psychic, you want to be a really good psychic. So you're like, oh, psychops are ten. Shit, yeah, I'm gonna be a psychop, and I'm gonna be stationed on Babylon five because I'm looking for rogue telepaths. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, so I want to be that. So like, I go pick a role. You are that guy. You're not th you're not that guy from the show. You, like if you pick the captain, you're not going to be Captain Sheridan. You're just the captain. Make up a name. Make up a character. You're the captain. You make up a name. You're not Bester. You're this guy. You know you he he's your guy that you rolled. And they're like that what? And so I go. Here's the deal. In this universe, instead of Commander Sinclair or Captain Sheridan getting assigned as the command staff to Babylon Five. You were. This takes place at the beginning of the show. And instead of these guys, things turned out differently. Like, I kind of gave them a primer on how, like, the history of it. Can know. Now, I mean, I know the characters in B5 had a history of the Battle of the Line and stuff like that. You know, what, what basically made Sinclair and why Sheridan is famous for, for being the only guy to destroy a Minbari vessel. Okay, so I was like... Here's how it actually went. You know, here's... And it's, it really didn't take that long. I explained so-and-so. You give me the character, I give you your history. Or you give me your history, what you did in the Battle of the Line. Whatever. And so I added my flavor to it. And I'm like, okay. Instead of the characters from the show, you're the guys who get transferred in as the command staff. And they go, okay. Right. And I'm like, there's more. So the... And I, I even went so far as to say, like, and the characters you don't replace are still the characters from the show. So if nobody wanted to be the XO, Ivanova's there. If nobody wanted to be Chief Security, you know, uh, 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 Garibaldi's there. You know, Londo is still there. They actually, they were like, nobody wanted to be Londo. So, or actually, they were like, could I be Londo? Like, literally Londo, like, with the hair. Like, Mr. Garibaldi! You know? Um, I was like, no, you have to make your own character. I was like, could I make a character who's exactly like Londo? I'm like, no! Bad pl No! You go, go lay down, you know? So I was like, um, but yeah, they, they wanted to be Marcus. Like you can make a character that's cool on his own. So they did. So I was like, okay. So every character who didn't get replaced is still there. And so they go, okay. And I go, there's more. Um, so here's the thing. You know how the show goes. You know who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. You know when the purple Kosh guy comes over there, you're in trouble. You know that, you know, the shadows are coming. So I don't want you guys doing this shit where, like, you're preparing, you're arming up, and you're preparing contingencies for shit when the shadows come. Uh, I don't want you guys, you know, knowing that, you know, when that probe comes over asking them for information that is actually a bomb. I don't want you just shooting it. And they're like... We wouldn't do that. I'm like, no, you probably wouldn't do that because I'm on to you. But the thing is, you'd still know, you know, so you couldn't help it. So it's that thing where like you, there's no, it doesn't I mean there's no point seeing the movie because you know how it ends. Yeah. So I'm like, that wouldn't be fun. So here's what's going to happen. It's a parallel dimension. Things turned out differently. You guys are the new guys on the, on the station. And I want you to forget everything you know about the show because it's not the same. It's not going to happen that way. In fact, characters on the, like the characters that are still there, like Ivanova or Morden or Londo or or uh, uh, Kosh or you know all those characters may not and easily will not act the same way that they did on the show. Like Londo will still probably act like Londo, but um, will Londo still make a deal with Morden? Will will uh, Kosh still be a good guy? You know, will he still? be this enigmatic dude will he still help you you know maybe he's not as benevolent as 
you know, he appears to be, or he didn't appear to be, but you know what I mean. So maybe, maybe Morden is just an encyclopedia salesman. He goes over there and asks, what do you want? And the guy goes, I don't know. I want a low fat yogurt. He's like, have you ever considered the benefits of having a really good set of encyclopedias? You know, and that's, that's not what I would do, but I was like, okay, from now on, the, the future history of this show is up in the air. Character motivations, character behavior, even things that are going to happen in the show may not happen the same way they did. So even the shadows, you know, maybe the shadows aren't as scary as they sound. <laughs> so I mean, not saying they're here to deliver milk and cookies, but maybe their goals are different. You know, maybe the Minbari surrendered the Battle of the Line for a completely different reason. You know, maybe Delenn is... I, you, know, I, you don't know what. Delenn is just as much of a mystery as anybody else. So, and that's not to say everyone's going to be a complete polar opposite. I'm not saying Kosh is all of a sudden going to be fucking Darth Vader. I'm not saying that Delenn all of a sudden is some evil Svengali who's committing genetic experiments on the Narns. I'm saying, like, you don't know. You know. So, even when stuff, even if I were to completely parallel the plot of an episode, which I would do, they would have to act, they were forced to act like they didn't know what was going on, which they didn't. So, I actually thought that was a really brilliant idea on my part, because they, it was, they were off guard. And so, it was actually a really unique experience to where it was, it was the show, but it wasn't the show. You know, they were kind of building their own show around it. There you go. And back to way to the beginning, what do you do in Marvel superheroes games? Or anything with an established continuity. I guess that really is what it comes down to, is anything with an established continuity, be it Marvel, uh, TV show, another one. Oh, my God. Uh, one game I really wanted to like was uh, Serenity. And they called it Serenity because they couldn't get the rights to Firefly. They could only get the rights to the movie. So in the book, they could only ever refer to something that happened in the movie. They couldn't refer to Firefly. It was so sucky. But, uh, you know, if you're doing it in Serenity or Buffy or there was a Buffy RPG. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, you named Supernatural. Actually, Supernatural is not bad. Um, the, by the way, the Serenity RPG, it sucks. If you're going to do uh, if you're going to do Serenity, just pick. I would always by default say, like, if it's a show and there's no book or the book exists and it sucks, uh, go with GURPS. Learn GURPS. It's a really good game. Um, the, the word generic in the title is its biggest flaw. You're like, generic? I don't want to play something generic. Don't worry about it. GURPS is really, really good. And actually, if you want to, if you're masochistic, the hero system is actually pretty good. Um, but you could do, you could adapt a lot of games to doing shit like that. You know, uh, I want to say Savage Worlds is kind of one of those somewhat universal games where you can apply the rules to anything, but yeah. If you've got, uh, oh, Dresden Files. There was, I was so looking forward to the Dresden Files RPG, and I haven't read it, but apparently it really blows. I'm so sad. I, I know, I kind of want to read it, just because I can't believe it. I love the Dresden Files novels. I'm like, how could this suck? And it, I read the first, like, 30 pages, and the fluff material seems good. It's kind of like an intro to the Dresden Files, so. I don't know, I, I've heard it's really, really bad. I'm trying to think of the other shows that were adapted to RPGs. Oreo, you behave. Ah, <laughs> uh, what other shows? Mostly the stuff that, like, you know, Joss Whedon shows. Uh, Angel was done that way. Um, uh, they'll come to me. Um, oh, what sci-fi? Uh, Star, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, the Star Trek RPGs weren't that good. In fact, I might have one up here. Ah, uh, no. But, uh, you know, anything with novels? Wheel of Time? Actually, dude, the Wheel of Time RPG... D20 is really good. It has one of the best uh, variations, the best takes on magic I have ever, ever seen. It's really alien and weird to learn at first, but it's so rewarding, and I never got to play it, but it's so good. Um, the, the mages in Wheel of Time are called the Aes Sedai, and they have what are called circles. Like, they have different colors that represent what they do well. So, they have, like, circles of magic, and you can choose different levels in the circles, and sometimes they overlap and they kind of stack in certain. It's so brilliant. I loved it, and I used to really like the uh, 
the Wheel of Time novels until they started really slowing down, and they all they already started slow. In fact, I used to joke they went so slow they started going backwards, which they did. Like at some point in book seven, he actually did a uh, Robert Jordan did a prequel. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, dude, and it was a good prequel. But I was like, dude, move forward. I want to see how it ends. And then he died. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm trying. I'm being flippant, but you know that guy died. It was a real tragedy when he died. But he. You're like, oh shit, the story's never going to be finished. But there's actually a guy who's finishing it now, but it's that was a weird thing. But um, I liked Wheel of Time, I did. <laughs> what are you doing, Oreo? She's going ape shit. I haven't paid attention to her in like an hour. <laughs> She's trying to get my attention so bad. So I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon by saying, like, if you're trying to do something in an established continuity of any kind, Marvel, whatever, uh... Do you can either do it before or after? In fact, Dragonlance had the same problem. If you wanted to do a Dragonlance game, uh, you had kind of this problem where, like, shit, do I do it during the War of the Lands? Do I do it during the Fifth Age? Because Fifth Age sucks. Fifth Age was was when the gods threw up their hands and were like, "Fuck it, we're leaving. You guys are on your own." And so all the gods left the world. Seriously, they got so pissed off they were just like, "You guys suck. We're going some. We're going to Aruba." So they left. And the result of that being magic no longer worked on Kryn. And you're like, well, that's boring. I know, right? And uh, the other thing about Dragonlance was everyone wanted to play the Heroes of the Lance. Nobody wanted to be some schmuck. Uh, so, uh, oh, that's the biggest problem with fucking Lord of the Rings. There's a, Of course there's a Lord of the Rings RPG, right? Because Lord of the Rings essentially inspire, inspired like D&D in general, right? <sighs> always had this huge problem with Lord of the Rings because y if you want to set it during the War of the Ring, and of course you do, nobody wants to play some guys who are not in the Fellowship, right? If you, Like, okay, first thing, you can't be a wizard. Well, you can, but it's it's weird. You know, it's... it's If you want to play a ranger, you want to play fucking Strider. You know, if you want to... Everyone wants to play these characters and they want to be involved in it because... If you're not involved with the quest of the ring, you know, because it, it seems pointless, you know, because you're like, at all times, you know, these guys are telling, oh, you need to go over here, you need to go to fucking Minas Tirith and, and stop these orcs from taking this outpost, and you're like, okay, but, you know, you know what's really cool is if we had like a ring bearer and we were going to Mount Doom, because that's actually important and dramatic and... The DM's like, yeah, but um, we got really important. You know, it's uh, this is the game. You know, and we're like, yeah, oh, fuck. So you, again, you have some options, but let's say you like you. This isn't even the kind of thing where you can um, play the characters of the movie because a, you know how it ends. B, it's you. You're you're kind of shackled to the character because like you know Boromir is gonna act like Boromir. You know, e either either he. Either he tries to take the ring from Frodo when he does, or he tries to take it before or after. But that's kind of the you know that's kind of the character where the where the ring influences and turns people. You know, and basically what happens is if anyone doesn't act in lockstep with the plot, the, the game is ruined. You know, the the ring doesn't get destroyed, so you can't do that. So you either play somebody other characters entirely; it's useless. You can either play different ages like either before or after the war of the ring and that's actually feasible but here's the problem if the if the if, if you're trying to dm it you had to have read like the silmarillion which is the lord of the rings book that nobody read you had to be hardcore to read the silmarillion and the silmarillion was really fucking boring um so i actually i was in a game one time that was set before the fall of uh, Numenor, which is where the uh, Numenorians were like humans, but they were they were um, almost like demigods. All the Numenorians, they were like the best of men, which is why they say that they, you know, the reason Aragorn is so cool, the reason Rangers are so cool, is because they have the blood of the Numenorians. Uh, so that's you know in the movie when Elrond is, is bitching to Gandalf. He's like, um, he says like, oh, fucking Aragorn, why do you like this guy? The blood of Numenor is all but spent. 
you know, he's like, look, sure, he's descended from these guys, but the bloodline is so weak. This guy's, this guy's just some bearded fuck, you know. That's what, so Numenorians, like, almost like if you were to, uh, a bad example, but one you might relate to is in the original Vampire uh, the bloodlines get thinner the farther you get from Cain. So Cain is the original vampire, and he had descendants, and they had descendants, and so on. You could only get, like, 13 descendants down before the blood was too thin to even carry the vampiric curse, okay? So, like, every generation got weaker. That's what the blood of Numenor was. So the Numenorians were these really... So we were playing characters who were essentially Numenorians, And so... But the thing is, though, like, it was so... It was so aloof and bizarre and things operated so differently in the world of the Silmarillion that you kind of had to act a certain way or it was really, really out of character. And I I think I remember playing, um, I was playing a guy who there wasn't even any really like, I'm sure I'll be corrected, but like even sarcasm or like, bad thoughts and stuff like that weren't really around until, like, Morgoth appeared. You know, it, it was weird. Like, there really wasn't any evil in the world before Morgoth came. I think that's one of the... I can't even remember the, the sentences. Like, and then came uh, and then came Morgoth or something. There Actually, there was probably a guy beyond Morgoth. I can't remember. But, yeah. Um, so, this guy really wanted to make it work. Where, like, he's like, ah, oh, this was this great age of adventure when Morgoth came and he swept the earth of, of life and there was this huge cataclysm and he's like, it's going to be so fucking dramatic. I read the civil rain and I loved it. And so it's going to be great. And so it wasn't great. It was really bad. Um, cause nobody read the Silmarillion. Um, I hadn't at the time and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know how characters were supposed to act. Like I knew basics, but I was over my head. Like one player knew the Silmarillion. So he knew what he was doing, but I was like, you know, so really, uh, I, I can't even, Lord of the Rings is one of the hardest ones. I don't know how you do it. Uh, even parallel dimension, shit, I, it wouldn't even work, you know, because uh, like, okay, you've got this ring and already you've got issues. Like, you know, you know, Frodo gets the ring or whoever's standing in for Frodo and he's like, oh, I got this magic ring and whoever's playing the wizard is like, I'll take that. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I would we could play this a different way. What if Gandalf did take the ring? And let's just say he could resist its influence and he put it on because he might. Yeah. What if we tried to get the eagles and fly straight to fucking Mount Doom? By the way, that's one of the stupidest complaints I ever heard. Why don't they just get on the fucking eagles and fly to Mount Doom? Here's why they don't do it. It's because if they tried to fly to Mount Doom, the Eye of Sauron would have seen these assholes coming on their giant fucking eagles... The guys on the wall of Mordor would have seen the giant fucking eagles and killed them. The fucking Nazgul had the fell beasts. You don't think these guys were doing anything else like looking around? You don't think the fucking ring is like a beacon of light to the Eye of Sauron? Because it is. So if these dudes were flying the fucking eagles to Mordor, the Eye of Sauron would have been like, boom, there, Nazgul, go kill that shit and bring me the ring. That's how it would have ended. So fuck you, people who said the... You ride the fucking eagles. Although, I would have loved to have seen them try that. If there was, like, if they were all full of assholes who were like, yeah, let's do this and fuck up Spoonie's game, I'd have fucking wasted you. And I would have laughed doing it. They'd have been like, oh, shit. Yeah, the Nazgul have fucking dragons. They're not dragons. They're felbies, I know. Before you start posting comments. But, yeah. You can't even do the parallel dimension thing. Because, like, then you've got this ring. You've got the all-powerful ring. You've got characters who could easily just fucking crack Frodo on the head and take it. Because you know they'd try. You know, you'd run into Saruman and they'd try to kill fucking Saruman and fail. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you'd know they'd try to take the Nazgul in a straight up fight. Because they stat them. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't they would they would go so far off the rails it wouldn't even be recognizable the the quest of the ring would just be fucked from minute one you know they'd run into Tom Bombadil and put a broadsword through his face or they'd try Tom Bombadil would wreck their shit honestly I'm so glad they took him out of the movie I hated Tom Bombadil hey ho the Dario Tom Bombadil 
the, you know, they try to probably kill Bomb, uh, Bombadil and fuck his wife. You laugh. They'd try. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I don't know how you do it. Aside, you'd have to relocate it to a different time. But what where I where I see a problem is you'd have to do it before the War of the Ring because if you did it after, Sauron is destroyed. You know, the ring is gone. There's, I mean, I'm sure there's bad guys here and there, but. There's no crisis anymore. I mean, I guess you could... You could come up with something. You'd have to. Like, yeah, that's about the only way I could see doing it. But I don't. I honestly don't know how they do the... The RPG. I, I can't think of a good way to stat it out, aside from being side characters. And it sucks being a side character. Again, like I said, DC Universe Online, you're some sidekick. Fuck that. You know, if you're playing... I could never play Lord of the Rings in that situation because I'd be like, I want to be Aragorn. And like, fuck this shit. I want to play some fucking Minas Tirith dude manning a fucking wall and being sent to just kill some no nobody orcs and when the really important guys are doing this shit. Like, okay, that's fine for the guys. Like, I want to be a hero. You know, I want to be... I want to be the guy who's making history and being important and... and and of course, if you were playing side characters, you'd know they'd try to get involved with the Fellowship of the Ring every chance they could because they'd go places they know the Fellowship is likely to be. Like, oh, we're going to go to Minas Tirith. Eventually, they're going to pass through here. You know. Yeah, that's just about the only way. That'd be so hard. Uh, and that reminds me, you ever play... Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of it. There was a really lousy fucking... Uh, I can't. I don't remember if it's Xbox or PS2. It was probably Xbox. There was a uh, there was a Lord of the Rings game, a video game, that was called like the Third Age. I think it was called the Third Age, where it was a turn-based RPG, and it was so lame. You didn't play the Fellowship of the Ring. You played a group of three guys who were trying to catch up to the Fellowship. I'm not even kidding. Like, the Fellowship had already left. So, like, you're tasked by... Uh, yeah, you're tasked by Denethor. Like, you play a Knight of Gondor. You're tasked by Denethor. They're like, oh, yeah. Um, my son Boromir has gone off on some fucking stupid quest to lead the Fellowship of the Ring. He went off on his own. He's, he's, he's gone off to get some fucking Ring of Power. I want you to go find Boromir and bring me that goddamn ring. And you're you're this knight who's completely generic. He has no character. So you go to Rivendell, and Elrond is like, oh yeah, yeah, Boromir. He just left. He's going to the the Gap of Rohan. And so you go to the Gap of Rohan, and along the way you meet an elf, and along the way you meet a dwarf. And so like all of a sudden the the novelty of the of the uh, three the three wa what is it um what do they call themselves the three walkers or something three runners they were when 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 aragorn uh uh legolas and gimli they, i think they call them the three hunters or something like that they ran off that was like a first that was like that that hadn't happened ever you know you know elves and dwarves never got along and they certainly didn't associate with men and so like when these three races were actually cooperating, that was like, in terms of, you know, the, in terms of Middle Earth, that was like historic. You never saw that shit. But now, you know, you're this Knight of Gondor and you meet up with this elf who of course wants to help and you meet up with this dwarf who of course wants to help and all of a sudden you've got these three dudes. And so, you know, you go to, you go to the Gap of Rohan and you're like, oh, we missed them. Fuck, there's snow everywhere. And of course there's uruk everywhere and so you fight the uruk -hai. And then you're like, you know where they must have gone? Moria. And so you go to Moria, and you're chasing these dudes through Moria, and you fight the goblins. And of course, this is where it gets really funny, is the uh, when you get to the uh, the Bridge of khazad you see the Fellowship running across the bridge. just And then Gandalf does his, you shall not pass! And he, he puts the staff down, and the... Uh, I, I can't remember how this goes, but, like, this was, I think, just after Fellowship was released, the, the movie. He breaks the bridge, and he falls down, and the, the Balrog falls down and pulls Gandalf up. And here's what You fight the Balrog. 
I, I, I can't. When did this happen? I think what it, no, I think what it was is Gandalf is doing his shit like he's trying to fuck with the Balrog, and then your guys run up from behind and attack the Balrog, and try to distract it long enough for Gandalf to do his thing. That's how it goes. So like you guys run up behind the Balrog. And it's doing its whips and shit. Because everyone wants to fight the Balrog, right? So you're fighting the Balrog. And eventually you kick its ass. Which should never fucking happen. But you kick the Balrog's ass. The bridge goes down. And they all fall. And of course you got, you're got you on the other side of the bridge. And you can't get past the Balrog. So you got to run off. So the Fellowship keeps running. And they go to uh, Lothlorien. And then you're like, oh, we got to find another way out of fucking Moran. So you go out. and you, you know, So you go to fucking Gondor. And you just miss the, you miss the fight. And... No, you you fight in the war, but you never get to see Aragorn again. Option. So then you go. You never make it to the crack of doom. Like you make it to the wall, and who do you fight at the the gates of Mordor? I want to say the mouth of Sauron, but I don't think you do. I can't remember. I think what happens is. I remember doing this, but I don't know if it's the last boss or an optional boss. I remember you do this, but you get to the very end and you fight Sauron. Yeah. You fight Sauron. I could not make this shit up. What happens is you go to the gates of Moria and I think there's a final boss, but then there's a final boss after the final boss. I think that's it. So, like, I think you fight the mouth of Sauron or something like that. So, you fight that guy and you beat him and then you go fight Sauron. So what happens is, Sauron, in this case, is personified, or whatever you want to call it. You fight the Eye of Sauron at the top of that tower that's looking around. You go up on top of that tower and you fight the Eye, that Sauron. I'm serious. This fucking game sucked. I actually played through because I couldn't believe how much it sucked. You fight the Eye of Sauron... It falls down, roll credits, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh Jesus, you know, it was so bad, I was like, I couldn't, I, in fact, I was like, you show up and you're fighting the Eye of Sauron, and I'm like, this is so, I was, are you serious, are you serious with this shit, oh my god, there, there actually were some PC games that parallel the, that you played the heroes of the Fellowship, although it was really weird, um, you formed your own fellowship. So, uh, you were Frodo, and you had Gandalf, and you could pick your companions. So, uh, and it wasn't just the other hobbits. Like, there was Merry and Pippin and Sam. Sure, you could take them, but there were other hobbits that you could recruit. Like, you could recruit, like, six, seven hobbits. So, there was a guy named Fatty Bulger, who you could recruit, and you had Fatty in your party. And, yeah, you there was other dwarves and there was other elves and like elvish lords you could take and you went through moria moria sucked by the way man that was hard i only beat fellowship i only ever got as far as fellowship which was actually i never i didn't really like it but in hindsight i like it a lot better but uh yeah it was it was really funny in that um you could uh you could recruit all these weird characters um i don't remember if you could recruit dudes like elrond probably not it kind of skipped right ahead to Moria. I really wanted to get to Moria fast, as I remember. But yeah, you had the, it was it was strange, um, and of course you get jumped by Nazgul. And what do you do? You try to fight the Nazgul, right? So it was the funniest thing, where like the fucking Nazgul would attack you, and probably the first time you would lose. And then what you'd do is you'd start over and be like, I'm going to fuck this Nazgul up. I'm going to fuck this guy right in the ass. So, like, you recruit every hobbit you can in Hobbiton. Like, you get Fatty Bulger, you get some other dude, you get, you know, some Proudfoot guy. I don't know, there's a, there's a ton of them. So, like, you fill your fucking fellowship with hobbits and Gandalf or something like that. You go over there and the Nazgul jumps you and the hobbits go, Poof! Like, the, seriously, it's like the hobbits just fucking surround this guy. And Gandalf is, like, the only guy who can do shit. Like, he's got Glamdring his sword. But, yeah, the hobbits are actually doing stuff. Like, they whittled the guy down because they got these little... It, you do meet Tom Bombadil, as I recall. And so you actually can get the uh, the barrow knives 
And so, like, those actually hurt the Nazgul. And so, like, you got these little dudes, like, just nickel and diming this Nazgul. And you can actually beat them. Which, again, doesn't really make any sense. Because um, all blades perish that pierce the Nazgul, by the way. So, like, that wouldn't have worked. I don't know if they ever did that in the game. I can't remember. It's been so long ago. But, yeah, you can kick the Nazgul's ass. But it's, it's again, it's like kind of like Cthulhu in the sense that even if you kill them, you don't kill them. They just, they're just kind of dissipated and they just return to Mordor and they come back, you know, they're, and they're pissed off. But yeah. Um, but even that, it, actually that was one of the few cases where like you could do a little bit of your own thing in terms of plot. It didn't really affect the plot, but you could choose your own fellowship. At least in the first game you could. So if you wanted a party of six hobbits, fuck it. You could have a party of six hobbits, but if you were doing an RPG, that wouldn't work out so good. Try to think of a way to do that. Lord of the Rings. That would be curious. Although I never... There was a few Lord of the Rings games. There was um, uh, Merp, Middle, Middle Earth Role Playing. Again, another really stupid name, Merp. Um, uh, I think it was called The Dark Eye. I can't remember if that was it. Um, something like that. But they were not really that good. They kind of went into a lot of Silmarillion fluff. I think they really wanted you to do before the War of the Ring. I initially said you couldn't be a wizard you could um there are other wizards that you never see in the movies i think there are eight you're gonna correct me on this i think there were eight and i think you only ever see five gandalf saruman radagast the brown there's either five or eight i think that, yeah it might be five because I think there's two guys you never see. I think there's one guy who's like something the blue who might be referred to. Or the other two are, are blue mages. They just like to wear blue. I don't know. But they're never really referred to. There's there's a couple wizards who are just kind of off in the ether doing shit elsewhere that never get involved. So like in theory, you could be a wizard. But, in fact, they might actually have stats for that. They tried to do something, because there's always a guy who wants to play a spell. You're like, oh, fuck, I can't play a wizard? And you're like, no, there's only five of them. You know, because they're, they're fucking, um, what's the name? Uh, Ayer or something. What are they called? Damn it, I used to, my memory is so bad. They're, they're really not wizards. They're kind of like the personifications or the mortal vessels of these beings of light. You know, which is why when Gandalf dies, he doesn't really die. He's returned to this kind of uh, ether and returned because you can't, you can kill them, but you can't, it's weird. You know, they're, they're kind of like these demigods. So like you, you can't really be a wizard, but you can, but you shouldn't, you know. Um, so every game I've ever seen tries to kind of hand wave it away. I think even Merp did this where like, they're like, okay, look. You can't be a wizard, but there are some guys who can kind of work magic, kind of, like they dabble, you know, there, there's nobody who's at all even remotely powerful, and then there was a, a Middle Earth or a Lord of the Rings Online, which of course there are spellcasters who can throw shit like nuts, which makes wizards completely irrelevant in terms of uh, their specialness, you know, so fuck it who cares you know it's it's an online rpg based in lord of the rings dude seriously tolkien if he knew there was an mmo based on his books he would be spinning so fast in his grave he drilled a fucking china oh god oh my god would that go he'd be, he'd be like what oh oh no oh no He'd go so nuts. It almost drives me nuts. Uh, my older brother went... He basically went ape shit as soon as he saw... When they diverged from the book at all. He was the kind of guy who was like, They shouldn't have taken Bomb Tom Bombadil out. Fuck this movie. But so he was like... When he finally lost his shit... He just was he just like, No, fuck it. I'm out. Was during the battle... Or before the Battle of Helm's Deep. He's like... It's looking really bad. Because these guys are outnumbered like 20,000 to... There's like 300 dudes in this. 300, whatever. So they're like, it's, it's thousands to one, you know. Or at least hundreds to one. And so things are looking really fucked. So nobody... Okay, in the movie, 
They're like, oh, we're fucked. We're so outnumbered. We are so fucked. And then they hear a horn. And it's the elves. And the elves send like a few hundred guys to man the walls with their bows. My brother stood up in that... My older brother, he was like, bullshit! Bullshit! He was like, no! No! He was so fucking pissed. And I was like, that was a really good movie. And he's like, what the fuck are you on? No! No! Fuck this shit! I'm like, what are you so mad? The elves? The elves show up at Helm's Deep? Fuck you! Betrayal! He's like, he's like, what's the big deal? So the elves show up. He's like, you don't understand. You, you, ha, ah, you're not my brother. <laughs> like, what do you, you don't understand. It's, the point of it is they overcome these impossible fucking odds and nobody comes to help them. They overcome on their own. <laughs> I'm like, dude, chill out. You're fucking going into the red rage again. He's like, ah, he's like, I'm not watching the other one. Fuck this. Next you know, they're going to be having the fucking Gandalf throw the ring in the crack. And I'm like, <laughs> it's like this really bugs me. Like, yes, it bugs me. Fuck this. Next you know, they're going to say, next you know, they're going to have fucking Wormtongue stab Sourman and throw him off the fucking tower. And then he's not going to, he's not going to take over Hobbiton and scourge the Shire. And I'm like, they wouldn't do that. Uh oh. <laughs> He's he's like he's like I'm not I I can't do it I no the fucking no no and what the fuck they took out they took out Glorfindo I was seriously like I gave I gave this series another chance with two towers because they took out fucking Glorfindo the fucking Arwen finds them when Frodo gets stabbed with the Nazgul fucking Arwen no <laughs> and I'm like. I kind of liked it, because Glorfinda, like, he shows up, you never fucking see him again. Whereas Arwen gets, like, five minutes of screen time in the books, and then she, like, fucking vanishes for the entire books, for the entire series. And he's like, fucking Glorfinda belonged in the movie! And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, motherfucker, all right. Don't, you're spraying on me, you're fucking frothing at the mouth, dude. He's like, oh, I hate these movies, and I'm like, okay, dude, okay. I don't even know where I was going with that. The role-playing game. But yeah. So. <sighs> I have raged on forever. I don't know where I'm going to break this video up, but I kind of went on a good rant there. This is how I get when you talk about RPGs with me. I just go on tangents. You could try. You should try to track, flowchart my tangents that I go on and how I return to them. It'd be fucking amazing. So. You got a super special deluxe episode at Counter Monkey this time around. I started off with this really lame topic. Uh, yeah, superhero games are not very good because Cyclops is an asshole. <laughs> so, like, long story short, here's the point I was trying to make. Cyclops is a douchebag. Eye lasers? That's it. How is he still alive? Why do they... Why do they still keep writing this motherfucker? Because he's fucking Emma Frost? Who gives a fuck, you know? I, I, I hate the X-Men, too. I fucking hate the X-Men. You ever see an ultimatum? They, I was so happy. They kill Cyclops. Don't worry. It's, it, even if it's a spoiler, sure, but who gives a fuck about Ultimatum, anyway? Link Hara did a rant on fucking Ultimatum. We're like, but yeah... <laughs> fucking magneto like shifts the poles and causes a tidal wave to like sink the entire eastern seaboard or some shit and so like professor x gets killed and i don't even know why he bothered because like cyclops is like oh yeah well we gotta try to like we got like we gotta try to uh you know rebuild public opinions th uh, thoughts on mutants good luck with that you know so he gets in front of like the capitol building and he tries to hold like a press conference where he's like not all mutants are bad okay one of us was a rogue who sank new york under a tidal wave with his obscenely godlike powerful magneto powers but we're not all bad even though like history is rife with all sorts of 
characters of the mutant kind who have gone bad and nearly destroyed the world, like Apocalypse. And anyway, we're not all bad, and like nobody's buying it. Like seriously, the mutant should have just packed it in. Like the X Men should have just been like, yeah, it's kind of over. This uh, this whole uh, mutant equality thing, because we're kind of fucked. <laughs> And by the way, Senator Kelly was right while I'm off on LinkedIn. Like, of course, mutants should be registered. Okay, it's, it's, we're not exactly going to, like, the internment camps where, like, you know, back in World War II, the Japanese were shifted to internment camps. There really wasn't a reason for that. Whereas, like, you can't draw parallels necessarily with, like, you know, racism or racial profiling or internment camps when it comes to mutants because I guarantee you, there's nobody in Japan who could fire optic blasts from their eyes. There's nobody in, you know, no normal guy can casually teleport inside the White House and stick a knife in the president's face, you know. There has to be some accountability here because these guys are a clear and present danger to the United States, as reinforced thousands of fucking times in the comic books. I'd be right behind the Sentinel program, honestly. Jesus Christ. Okay, the X-Men are good guys, but how many... Okay, seriously, I gotta wrap this up. Because I'm getting pissed off. Cyclops, douchebag. That's it. Uh, Call of Cthulhu, awesome. I'm out.